Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at two fountain pens that are um, basically the exact same. Um, here we have the Jinhao 992, and up here we have the Monteverde Monza. Um, if you've been keeping up with recent fountain pen stuff, or if you're on the fountain pen Reddit or anything like that, um, you've probably heard about these two pens. They're very, very similar, um, to the point that one of them is ripoff. Um, as far as I know, the 992 came out first. Um, there's theories that maybe the Monza is using the same factory to produce them. Um, I could completely see that as well. Um, the only real dissimilarity is there's a slight color difference. Um, this one's a lot more yellow, the Jinhao, and the Monza's a lot more orange. But we'll go ahead and jump into it and do the uh, specs, size, comparisons, like, neutral, dislike. Um, and we'll kind of do them together because a lot of the complaints and other things that I have with one pen I have with the other. Where there are differences, though, I will make note. We'll do a writing sampling and conclusion. All right, first up, um, the official specs are more available for the Monza, even though they're the exact same size, weight, and everything, so I'll just go over those real quick. So first up, um, the length of the body, or the pen closed, is going to be 134.8 millimeters. The length of just the body, excluding the nib, is 117.8. Length of the nib is 17.3. Length of the cap is 64.5. And then the overall posted length is going to come out to 144.6. I'll just kind of leave that open so you guys can see. You can see there. It'll focus. There we go. Um, now, there are a few other differences, which I'll touch on, but size and weight-wise, they're the exact same. Um, overall weight of each pen is 7 grams, or I'm sorry, 14 grams. 7 for the cap, 7 for the body. All right, on to um, some quick size comparisons. I'm just going to use one of them for now, um, because, again, they're the exact same size. So we'll go ahead and do a closed size comparison, and I do have uh, a couple of special pens to compare this to today. Uh, first up is my newly repaired sort of um, pilot vanishing point my wife gave me a new nib for christmas so you guys can thank her for that one so that'll be making a return for our ink reviews next up we have a new to me at least pen um a lamy 2000 uh we picked this up in atlanta also a christmas gift um fantastic pen so far there'll be a review of that coming i'm um, in a few weeks more than likely and then we have the Lamy Safari um, in charcoal. And let me see if I can squeeze this in just a little bit more. And I'll bring in the Twisby 580 as well, um, since that's such a common staple in these videos. So you can see this pen, even while capped, is fairly short. Um, now, when you uncap it, you do get, uh, you know, a, a fairly similar kind of result. It's a very short pen. Um, Especially with how small the actual barrel is, the section is pretty average length, I would say, but the um, the barrel is very very tiny. So you can see there, even though the total overall length comes out to about the same length as the Lamy 2000, or you know fairly close to the Lamy Safari, the actual length of the body is just so short that it's um, it's almost difficult to hold. They're very similar in length, at least, to a Platinum 3776. The Platinum's a little bit shorter, but that pen being thicker seems to be more comfortable for me to hold, at least. So we'll go ahead and do um, a posted comparison. I'm not going to post the Twisby, um, because of, as I've noted before, the 580 really isn't meant to be posted. It's not really made for that, so... And I'll just go ahead and remove the vanishing point at this point, because it can't post. I want to take those guys as well. And then we'll post the Monza. Um, posted, it comes up to, a, you know, a pretty decent length. Um, it's it's not too long posted. It's very usable. I actually prefer to use this pen posted. Um, it does back weight a little bit with a cap, but it's not too bad. All right, and for the last size comparison... Um, we'll go ahead and just compare this to, uh, Diva. So you can see, um, 
I don't know, maybe like three divas, two and a half divas. Not a super long pen. If you uncap it, it really comes out to two divas. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this. Just that it's a somewhat smaller pen, which a lot of beginner pens in this price range really are. All right. <clears throat> um, real quick, before I get into the, the you know good and bad stuff about these pens, I do want to point out a couple differences. Um, aesthetically... They're very, very similar. Um, pretty much all the details are the exact same on them, except for a few key points. First up, the branding um, on the cat band. You can see this one says Jin Hao on one side in kind of a, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of a crosshatch pattern. And this one does say Monteverde, USA, Monza in a hideous, hideous font. That's fine, though. One interesting thing about this pen, the Monza actually has a clear feed, which is nice. And the nib looks different, of course, um, than the Jin Hao. It's a bit more decorated, um, a bit more visually appealing in my opinion, but we'll get to that. Jin Hao does have a um, normal black plastic feed and the default design of the Jin Hao nib. Okay. On to the like. Um, first up, I'll just cover what I like about both of these pens, really. So the first thing is that they post very deeply. Um, I'll go ahead and post one of them and just uncap the other. So you can see here, it doesn't give it a ton more length, but it's just enough. Uh, at least for my hand. When I'm holding this pen, it's, it's small. Um, but when you post it, it becomes a much more usable length for me. I like it quite a bit more posted. But the pen posts very, very deeply, very securely, and I've not really had any issues with it coming off at all. It posts very nicely. Next thing up is the cap seal. Um, you can see there's a small seal on both caps um, up here towards the top, and they just fit right on the uh, end of the section there. And I, because of that little seal, you can kind of feel it tightening. I haven't had any issues with these pens drying out. Um, I have gone several days without using them in a row, and I haven't run into any problems with them. So it works pretty well, especially for cheaper pens like this. Um, next thing up is the clip. On both of these, it's just very easy to slide on and off of um, you know, pockets. Uh, it's not super springy, but it's not super um, tense either. It's a nice kind of in-between, and the clip tension is the exact same on both of these as well. Um, next up, these pins are super easy to disassemble. Um, I can actually demonstrate here real quick. I'll get a little ink on my hand, but that's not a big problem. So, um, you know, take off the cap, unscrew the barrel, and you can remove the converter. And then just to remove the um, nib and feed, you just, you know, pull it out, and you can see it coming out there. You just pull that all the way out. Very easy to disassemble. Very easy to clean because of that. Um, so if you're looking for a pen to kind of play around with, this isn't a bad one. I'd probably go with a different Gen Hal that more has a more standard feed, but you know this one being clear might make it a little easier on you. Next up, um, very smooth threads on the section on both of these pens. Um, because of how short the section is, I do have to grip it back a little bit. My thumb rests on the um, on the threads for the cap, so. They're very, very smooth, though, and there's very small step-ups here, so it's not really a big issue. Um, which plastic threads are never really sharp, but these are still seem to be a little smoother than normal, so I appreciate that. Next up, both of these pins do come with a converter. Um, this one here, I do have a bit of a problem with. Um, when I got it, it was crooked, and it still kind of is. I don't know how well you can see that. But basically, when I thread the cap onto this pen, it, um, or the barrel, rather, um, it would bump against the converter every single time you turn it because of these little notches at the end here. Um, the Jin Hao did not have that issue. That was exclusively with the Monza. Um, despite the higher price tag, they're just about the same um, in a lot of areas. But they both come with a converter. That's pretty good. All right, now we're going to kind of um, separate the two. So this is where they kind of split off. This is the Jin Hao. Um, 
You can tell because it's slightly more yellow. You might not be able to tell. Um, but if you do need to notice the difference, this converter is slightly longer. Um, if I forget to point it out on camera. But basically, um, the one thing that I like about this that I'm not in love with about the Mons is the price. This pen was like less than $2 shipped to my door. Um, and it shows. We'll, we'll get to that. But the design of the pen isn't bad. Um, and that price is pretty decent. Let's get on to what, um, what I actually like about the Monza um, that I didn't really get to experience with the Jin Hao. Um, it's actually the packaging. So this pen comes packaged in a, a very nice little container. I'll bring it out here. Um, here it is, and it matches kind of the color of the pen somewhat that you end up getting. Comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, I just got these both in the orange-ish finish. Um, just because I like orange. I don't really like either one of these though. So, um, It does come with two standard international cartridges. Um, they do look a little funny, but they're standard international. Um, the converter is here when you get the pen. And then the pen sits right here. And you can just pull it out. Um, this isn't really all that bad. Um, this could actually be used as a travel case for a different pen. Um, it's plenty long. It can, you know, we can even fit the vanishing point, to be honest. So if you just needed a small carrying case for a pen, um, you can usually fit cartridges or extra converters in here. And, you know, um, it, it works. Um, this foam's actually really soft as well, so if you needed to cut slots for um, ink sample vials, you know, it's not bad. Um, especially for the price you pay for this, the packaging pretty decent, especially compared to a lot of other pens. Alright, and there's one more thing that I liked about the um, Monteverde Monza more than the Gen Hao. Um, the nib and feed. So this nib, at least to me, is decorated very beautifully. Um, very elegant flowing circles, and you can kind of see the Monteverde, the little um, mountain logo there. But you can also see through the feed. I really like the plastic clear feed. Adds a little bit of character to it. Okay, on to the neutral. So these are the exact same for well, mostly for both pens. This one has one more that the uh, Jin Hao doesn't. But the, the Jin Hao and the Monza both, um, the section is okay. It isn't terrible. It's small, and there are um, lines from the um, injection molding. But it's not bad. Um, it's kind of tapers down, so it's slightly contoured. I just wish it were a little longer and a little wider. It is very, very narrow for me. Um, but it's not a bad section, by any means. It's a whole lot better than, you know, the Pilot Petite, um, the Platinum Preppy, like, the just cylindrical. This kind of contouring with this little taper up at the end here as well, um, I appreciate that a lot. So it's, it's not a terrible section, not a great section. Just, you know, it's a decent section. Next thing up is the size. Um, I'll say this again, this pen is small for me, um, very small. Um, it is uncomfortable for me to use without it being posted, and even when it's posted, it's just a little thin. Um, but yeah. And there's one thing about the Monza that I'm kind of neutral towards that I'm not so happy with on the Jin Hao, and that is the nib. Um, so you'll see in the writing sample I'll do in just a moment here, this nib, even though it says it is a medium, it writes a lot like a fine um or more like a Western extra fine, actually. Um, I'm not impressed with this nib. It's it's super feedbacky to the point of almost being scratchy, and I don't like it. Um, it's dry, um, but you're probably wondering why this is a neutral section, not the dislike. It's because the nib on the Jin Hao is so bad that it makes this nib look fantastic. So when I'm riding with both of them, this is vastly preferred. Okay, on to the dislike. I'll go ahead and cover um, what I dislike about both pens first, as usual. So first thing to dislike is this little, it looks like a nipple at the end there. It looks stupid. I don't know why they put it in there. You can see it's actually a, a separate piece. They plunge down in there. I don't know why they didn't just make the barrel one whole chunk. Um, it looks ridiculous to me. It also creates some problems, which I'll show you in just a moment here. Um, next thing I dislike is the build. Build quality on these is terrible, especially on the Jin Hao. It is just 
horrible. Um, the gluing for the cap seal is uneven. Um, you can see here that ink has actually gotten in between different layers of plastic on the section. I'll try to show you here as well. The section plastic is actually cracking and filling with um, ink from the top there. So it's a very cheaply made pen on both of them, to be honest. Um, I'm not impressed at all. Um, and on the Monza, it's even worse than that, in my opinion. Um, this pen has the potential to be eyedroppered if this doesn't happen. Um, you can see here, if I can show you, let's see. So you can see that crack right there. It is cracked from the little nipple part down pretty much to the end of the lines here. Um, there's a crack there, there's hairline cracks all along here, and the gluing is also very uneven on the Monza. Um, don't know how well you can see that, but it does not look good. Build quality on both of these is kind of terrible. Um, it's just bad. Okay, next up we're going to kind of split them up. Um, we'll go ahead and do the Jin Hao first. So I hate this nib. Um, I've tried everything that I know how to do. The tines are aligned. The feed is aligned properly. There's ink in here. It's getting down to the nib. Nib doesn't have baby's bottom. Still does not write reliably. There are hard starts and skips almost every single time I use it. And I hate writing with this pen. Um, I don't use it outside of this review period. I'm never going to touch it again. Same thing with the Monza, to be honest. Um, I'll probably give both of these away, but actually I'll probably throw this one in the trash. It's it's terrible. It's a pain to write with. I don't enjoy it whatsoever. Um, Jin Hao's nibs are usually really, really good. This is the first Jin Hao I've ever had that's disappointed me, and it's disappointed me a lot. It's, it's, it's not worth the $2. Alright, on to this one. So... I'll discuss a little further something I discussed earlier, the bent converter. You know, for $16 for a pen to include a converter, it could be worse. Because um, a lot of $16 pens don't include one. Or if you take, you know, the um, Metropolitan, for example, it's an Aerometric converter. This is a regular piston-style converter. And although it's a little smaller than normal, holds a little less ink, um, as you can kind of see here. It's... It's still standard international. It comes with a converter, you know. But with it being so bent that when I unscrew and screw the barrel on, I can hear it hitting and clicking and I could see the bend, um, that was kind of unexcusable. Um, I would have rather than not include a converter than include a broken one. Uh, it kind of makes me worried. And I have used it to see if it would fail. It has not. I don't see any leaks or anything. But it still feels very poorly made. Very unimpressed, especially compared to, you know, this one where the converter feels solid. Which is a shame, because it's an eighth of the price. Um, and the thing I really, really dislike about the Monza is the price. Now, for $16, you can get a lot of pens. Um, you can get a good Jin Hao, a lot of good Jin Hao's for that price. Um, you could probably pick up a used Safari for that price, which is a much better pen. You can get a Palette Metropolitan for that price, which is a much better pen. Do they come with, you know, the Lamy doesn't come with a converter, the Pirate... Pilot converter, frankly, is terrible. But the pens that you're actually buying work. I would recommend literally any pen over either one of these. But especially this one at that price. You can get a lot for $16 nowadays as far as fountain pen goes. Um, a lot of pen makers seem to be aiming at that kind of lower price market, which I think is where Monteverdi is aiming with this. But I've got to be honest. Um... I'm going to kind of go into the conclusion here a little bit, and then we'll, then we'll jump to the writing sample. Um, this is my first Monteverde pen. I can honestly say I doubt I'll ever buy another pen from Monteverde. And I feel like if you're going to approach the lower end market, you really want to hook people in. Um, like Pilot with a Metropolitan. If you have Pilot Metropolitan, chances are very likely you're going to end up going with a higher end pen because it's well made. You might, you know, get a vanishing point. And they've sold you a lot more expensive product. Granted, it's great, but, you know, I don't think Monteverde is going to make much business off of this. Um, the ratings on it are fairly low from what I've seen. My opinion of it, it's terrible. So I think they are 
you know, they might be selling some of these pens, but they're losing customers pretty quick. And it's it's painfully obvious that the Safari and you know the the Skyline Sport and the Metropolitan are just made better. The quality is better, the craftsmanship's better. Um, this pen doesn't have a bad design, very simplistic, very basic, kind of original fountain pen design, very classic looking, but the design's all it has going for it. Um, everything else kind of sucks with this pen, especially for the price that the Mons is coming in at. Um, the Jin Hao, get a different Jin Hao, it's trash. Okay, um, so now you guys know I kind of hate these pens, and um, I don't know which one's rip off of which, to be honest. One of them is a knockoff, though. Um, if you say anything other, I can see people, you know, disagreeing with my, um, what was that pen I had? Wingsung 618, I think. Um, you know, that was more of an opinion, kind of based, you know, I, I think they ripped it off. This is not opinion. This is factual. One of these pens is a knockoff. They're the exact same. Slight color variations, different nib. That's it. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think, you know, in the comments. Um, which one came first? It doesn't really matter, to be honest, because they're both terrible. But And I would not I would avoid purchasing either one. Let's go ahead and uh, go on to the writing sample. Got a Rhodia pad here. Um... Let's see if we can reduce that a little bit. There we go. Maybe now you can actually see it. Okay. Um, we'll just start off with the uh, the Jin Hao. This is the best I've ever seen it right. <laughs> of course, probably from throwing it around. This is the Jin Hao 992. Um, the ink is... Pilot Namiki Black. No, nope. a little skipping there. I'm gonna say this this nib right here is a lot smoother than the um, other one, but I, I think it has uh, some other issues, so it doesn't really matter how smooth it is if it doesn't write half the time. And um, I'll just go down here and we'll kind of do a side by side. Okay. One swap over to the Monza, and you can see real quick, um, it had some trouble in N, had some trouble in the K, right around here. It starts off fine-ish, and then it gets really bad. All right. So this is the Monteverde Monza. I will say, however, if you're curious about this pen, um, Goulet is currently running a promotion where you get a free 90 milliliter bottle of ink. Um, with the purchase of any Monteverde pen and a few other brands as well, um, which is I think fifteen dollars for a bottle. Um, so you get the pen for basically a dollar. If you're that curious about it, pick it up for a dollar. For a dollar, it's not a terrible pen. But um, that's all I can really say about it. <laughs> um, because for much more than that, you can get a good Jin Hao. And a good Jin Hao is better than a terrible Monza. This thing here is Monteverde Purple Rain. Um, it's the one I got free with this. It's this thing here. We'll have a review of that coming up soon. Um, I really like it so far, by the way. So you can see this pen writes significantly better than the um, Jin Hao. It is a little scratchy though. You may even be able to hear it. It's. Uh, I'm not a big fan. But one thing I'd really want to point out is just how fine this nib is. The Jin Hao is listed as a fine. The Monza is listed as a medium. They're the exact same, essentially. I'll go ahead and pull out um, just the Lamy Safari here and kind of give you an example. Um, this is a Western fine. So you can see here, compared to the medium, it's not even close. Monteverdi's nib sizes are very awful on this pen, so if you're looking into getting that, um, honestly, if you're looking for a medium or something, I'd probably check on abroad. I don't know how they perform. And again, I would avoid getting this pen unless you just want to try it for a dollar and get the free ink. But it's up to you guys. All right, um, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
Um, if you've made it this far in the video, I do want to give you kind of a teaser. Um, as I stated, I have a review of the Lamy 2000 coming up within a couple of weeks. But the big thing I want to um, make known is by the end of this week, since I'm putting out this video so late, it'll be this week, um, I am going to do a top five pens, top five inks, and a top five knives for the four of you who watch those. But um, I'm having some trouble ranking them, but by the time I shoot the video, I'm sure it'll be out. And I'll have that out um, either on the 30th or the 31st. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys.